on the board is Romans chapter 6, verse 1. I want to try to go through this chapter if I can. But uh, <clears throat> David, would you bring the cross up for me, son, and put right in front of me? Now, when you read that, look what it says. What shall we say to all this? Well, what was this? This was chapter 3, 4, and 5. When you read all about justified through faith, God has made us righteous. We have been acquitted from, uh, for, from all our sins. We are clean. We're holy. We're sanctified. We're children of God now. We've been born again now. All of this, all of that. We are the family of God. We've been baptized into the body of Christ by the Spirit of God. We've been baptized into Christ when he died. His death was our substitute. He died for us, and yet we died with him. All of that has been done. So what shall we say to all of this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Next verse. Certainly not. Verse 2. Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Now get that in your mind. Everybody say, I died, I died. To, sin. to sin. Right, when? Okay, when? When did you die to sin? That's right. When Christ died, you were in Christ and you died. That's why water baptism is so important. Water baptism does not save us, but it's a picture of the death the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord. So in God's mind, we have already died with Christ. In God's mind, we've already been buried with Christ. And in God's mind, we have been resurrected to walk in the newness of life, and that newness of life is the life of Jesus. Okay? Now, when you're on this side of the cross, and you're not saved yet, You've got to realize that you are under the control of the spirit of this world. That is Satan. Satan was your father. Okay? And then God began to move. All of a sudden, somebody cr comes across your path and shares Jesus with you. And you start thinking about it. And then the Holy Spirit begins to work with you. And then all of a sudden you get convicted in your, in your heart and your spirit that you're lost, that you're separated from God by your sin, and you find out you are a sinner, and that's what's keeping you separated from God. But you say, well, what sin did I do? Number one, you realize you inherited the sin that came all the way from Adam. When Adam fell in sin, his DNA got all messed up, and he passed it all the way to us. And here we are on this side of the cross. We're lost. If we would die at this point, the Bible says we would go to hell. I didn't write the book. I just preached the book. Okay? So here we are in a bad condition over here. Somebody witnesses to us. Somebody gives us a track. We begin to see that we're lost. Well, we decide to go to church. Our friend invites us to church. Why don't you come to church? Yeah, we go to church. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and he convicts you of sin, that you're lost and you're separated from God. And the preacher gives the invitation, and he tells you, if you want to get saved, let me tell you what the Bible says. If you will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And you take God at his word, and you come up, and you tell the preacher, I want to get saved, and he'll lead you into that prayer. Now, you can't do that without the Holy Spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit that actually convicts you and brings you forward, and you confess that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and therefore God seals you 
by the Holy Ghost. He puts a seal on it. You now do not belong to yourself anymore. You don't belong to the devil. You belong to God. And then in God's mind, you pass through the cross. You're in Christ. God has put people in Christ. When Christ died, you died. We have to understand that. It's done, it's finished, it's complete as far as God's concerned in his mind. And then when they took Christ off the cross, you were in Christ. They carried Christ to the tomb, you were in Christ. When he carried you, when he carried Christ to the tomb, you were in the tomb with him. He's laying there on the slab. You're laying right there in Christ on the slab with him. And then he was resurrected. And when he was resurrected, you were resurrected with him. And now you're able to walk in the fullness of the Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? You have to understand that, and by faith you accept it. Just like you accept Christ as your Savior, you accept his death as your death. He's our substitute. You accept his burial as your burial, and you accept his resurrection as your resurrection. Now, in God's mind, the old Adam has been dealt with, the old sin nature has been dealt with over here, and you are no more a sinner. But now you have been resurrected with Christ, and the Bible says now you are a saint. Now you are righteous. Now you are holy. Now you are justified. Now you are a child of God. Now heaven is your home. God is your heavenly Father. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You serve God now. Certainly now, how can you who died to sin live it in it any longer? All right, let's go to the next verse, and we'll start to move fast. Are you ignorant of the fact? Everybody say, fact. fact. What fact is he talking about? That all of the shield of faith who are Christians right here have been baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into what? His death on the cross. That was done for you by God himself. Now, I want you to see what it said. We were baptized into Christ, into Christ Jesus, and we were baptized into his death. Okay, let's go to the next verse. We were buried there in the, in the grave, in the tomb. We were, we were, say, I was, my old man was, buried with Christ for me. I agree with God. That's what you do with the scriptures. By faith, you accept it and agree with God. That we were buried, therefore, with him. How? By baptism into death. Now, this is something the Holy Spirit does for us. The water baptism is only a picture of what has happened spiritually to you. See, some people get that mixed up. They think when they go down to water, they, they, that's their death. No, they've already died. No, that's a picture. Okay? So the Holy Spirit buried us with Christ. Therefore, with him and by the baptism into his death, when he died, we were baptized into his death by the Spirit of God, just like the Spirit of God baptized us into the one body of Christ. Everybody understand that? That's in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, right in there. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory and power of the Father, so we too might habitly live and behave in newness of life over here now as Christians. Now, you still have the same body. There's a lot of habits that... Uh, uh, we had when we were over here. Remember all the different habits and, you, and some of it? It'll take a little while sometimes to get rid of those habits. It took a, uh, a little while. I could go through every experience of different uh, habits that I had that God had to break me from smoking, cigarettes, uh, chewing tobacco, uh, spitting on the front lawn, uh, different things like that. That's right. Uh, how many had bad habits when you were over in the world? How many, how many, let me see how many cursed, you, you cursed over here. How many, when you were over here, in the, you were in, you cursed. How many lie? 
How many committed adultery? Not a hand went up. Oh, I could use the scripture on you, but I ain't going to do it. If you break one law, what? You're guilty of a mama. Gotcha. Uh-huh. Gotcha. That's what the Bible says. But God has forgiven us and has dealt with us. And now we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Now, some of those old bad habits come over here because they're bad habits that we picked up in our bodies. You know, we might have gossiped over there. We might have told lies over there. We might have looked at funny books over there. Not funny books. Pornography over there. Uh, we, we, we would watch all kind of stuff on TV. You know, we, I, when, I, when I was, I just loved those, those killing and shooting movies. Then y'all, 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 y'all didn't like them, huh? I, I used to like those days. Remember those days? Man, yeah. Shoot first and ask questions later. I love Roy Roger. <laughs> Some of y'all looking at me and say, wait, wait, wait. Say, be honest, I'm an honest man. I'm, I know all about the flesh. I know all about the flesh. See, we all came from the same stalk, Adam. Somebody wave at me. I know that you're out there. See, see, but now you are, that's past tense. That's gone. But now the old habit is sort of sticking with you. Now you're going to have to learn how to overcome that habit. Now that's another sermon. But right now in your mind, you need to see what I'm telling you. That we are new creatures of Christ, born again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, verse 21, in that same chapter. He that knew no sin became sin. With our sins. And we became righteous, what? With his righteousness. Put that quickly on the board. Romans, I mean, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 21. Real quick, like, then we'll come back, to, come back to 5. For our sake he made Christ virtually to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become endowed with and viewed as being in an example of the righteousness of God, what well, we are to be approved, acceptable, and the right standing, right relationship with him by his goodness. So that's something God did for us. Everybody say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. Yeah. Why, why, why resist God? Why resist God? If God says you're righteous, why not just accept it? That's, that's simple, isn't it? That's simple. Just accept it. Now, I'm not talking about your behavior. Anybody got any behavior patterns you'd like to get rid of? Yeah, sure, all of us. That's, that's a process of sanctification. Now, remember that. That's a process of sanctification. Now, we're not talking about too much about that right now. Now, let's go, to, go back to Romans. Fourth verse. I love that. For our sake he made Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's Romans 5, 4. We're on 6. Romans 6, 4. Notice, we were buried, therefore, with him. When was you buried? 2,000 years ago. With who? With Christ. We were buried, therefore, with him by the baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might have to live and behave in newness of life. Now, we read that before. Go to verse 5. For, we were, for, we, for if we have become one with him, notice this, look at the board, for if we have become one with him by sharing a death like his, and when did you share the death like his? When he died. So you've got to think this through now. We shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. Oh, well, just hold that position right there. All right, did everybody uh, experience that first one by faith? 
not by feelings, but by faith. For if we have become what? One with him by sharing a death like his, we shall also be one with him in sharing his resurrection by a new life lived for God. Now we have a new life. We go into the scriptures and we check out how to live that new life. And it's not that hard. That's where the blessings are. But there's some of that old stuff we have to shake off. And that's a process of what we call sanctification. Little by little, that desire to do that particular thing, God will work in us and get, take that desire out as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit. I have no desire to drink no more. I used to love to drink beer. I drink alcohol. How many of you ever did? Don't raise your hand. Don't want to look at it. There stands the glass. Fill it up to the brim. Some of y'all look so innocent. <laughs> but see, God... Is drinking a bottle of beer a sin? I'm not talking about that. I'm saying the desire for it was taken out by the Spirit of the living God, and that's called God working in me, making me willing to give up my booze. And when that time came to give it up, it was no problem at all. I just didn't want to drink anymore. How many understand what I'm talking about? See, that's real sanctification. That's real resurrected life working in our lives. And we need to understand what God's doing and what he has done and what he is doing and what he's going to do through us. All right, let's go to the next verse. i got to move fast. We know that our old, unrenewed self was nailed to the cross. Everybody say, I know. I know. Okay, my old man, unrenewed self, was nailed to the cross. When Christ was nailed to the cross, your old man, all of what he loved to do, I, me, and myself, no more. You had to get rid of the old, the old song. Me, 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 if it's not about me. Forget it. How many of you know me is the problem? <laughs> That's the old man. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I don't want to do that. I just can't understand why we got to do that. I've got... That's me. Man, if you don't do what I want, I ain't going to play no more. I ain't going to play with you no more. I had a young man, I remember in Wayland, we lived at Wayland. I was about, I think I was about 12 years old, 11, 13, 12, I think. And I was up on this garage. We were playing cops and robbers. I got up on the, on the, on the, on the uh, garage, and he was sneaking around like this, looking for me. And I was up there looking down at him. I said, hey, Roger. Boom, you dead, boy. I ain't dead. I said, you dead. No, I ain't dead. You dead. I ain't going to play no more. Don't go and play no more. He went home. His mother took three days. His mother made him go out there and say, you go out there and play with Bobby right now or I'm going to beat you good. He come out and said, well, I don't want to play with you. But my mama said, she's going to beat me good. So I'm going to play with you. What are we going to play? Let's play some marbles. Okay. <laughs> that was back in the marble days. How many's been there? Come on, come on, don't lie to me, man. You're in the house of God. <laughs> yeah, it'll do you good to confess your sins. But see, but that we, we, we understand. No, wait a minute, that, died, that bad habit died with Christ. Now, okay. So now here you are. Now here, I'm going to help you out now. You're doing real good. You're in church. All of a sudden, this certain desire comes into you. Uh, I got to stay out of trouble. What would be a bad, good desire? Huh? A bad, good A bad, good word. What would be a bad, good habit? Ice cream. Huh? Ice cream. Ice cream. Now, that ain't bad. <laughs> Is it really? Ice cream ain't bad. <laughs> Let's just say you have a, uh, a little jealousy. 
we're over here. We're jealousy of, of somebody over there. And, and, that, and you know that jealousy, you feel it. How many can feel jealousy? Come on. How many? Come on. Some of you ain't alive. Huh? You did? Yeah, you, that's right. You did die, didn't you? No. You, do you recognize jealousy? Oh, you recognize it. Oh, I got jealousy. What's new? That came over from the old man. Put off the old man. How do you put him off? Father, I thank you. As we read the word of God in Romans 6, it says this, knowing this, that the old man has been, has been past tense, crucified, the old man, that old man that's jealous, envious, died with Christ. Thank you, Father. Now you're getting blessed. Died with Christ. Before you go through that door, catch this, son. No, I don't want you to miss this. And then you can go. Can you hold it? This is important. That old man that wants to go. Yeah. But here's what you do. See, you got to catch this now. Because if you don't, you'll be running around the, the mountain all your life, and you'll be running down these rabbit trails trying to get victory over something you've already got victory over. And you got it at Calvary, and you reckon about it. You reckon on it. You know the old man, that old jealousy was dealt with in Christ 2,000 years ago, and then you get into the Spirit and get happy, and thank you, Lord, it was done with 2,000 years ago. I died to jealousy. Now, what happens, the Holy Spirit has the responsibility to move, do that inward work in you to deal with that jealousy. Are you listening? See, people discipline each other outwardly, but until it is done inwardly, it's not done. When God does the work, say, everybody say, it is God, it is God. Working, working in me removing that jealousy out of me. Now, you set him moving when you agree with him what Christ did for you at Calvary and realize it is done, it is finished, it's complete, and I reckon and I consider it done, and I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're making it alive, even though it happened 2,000 years ago in God's mind. Now, experimentally, it's working in your heart, in your life, and God is removing, removing that darkness, removing. That's called sanctification. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, it says, God will, is faithful to sanctify us, spirit, soul, and body. And you just thank God for taking that out. Now, it may take two months before every bit of it will come out. It may all come out at one time. You can't limit God according to your faith. Now, I don't have any jealousy. Now, I used to have jealousy. I used to have lust. None of y'all ever had lust, did you? You go to Walmart, you lust for everything on those counters, don't you? Huh? Go by the ice cream place, you lust for ice cream. I scream, you scream, we're all scream for ice cream. Listen to me now. This is important. You just can't agree with me, but you've got to move this principle in operation in your life. All right. Susan, would you come up, darling? Are you cold, baby? That coat feels good, doesn't it? Now, let's say I do something like this. Uh, bless me out. Oh, I'll bless you out. No. Well, you shouldn't have done that. You're, you spend too much money. Man, the card's already up to $10. What do you do that for? All right. Now, I'll walk away. This is the way it works. Uh, Bob. Uh, yes, Lord. You owe Susan an apology. It wasn't what you said that wasn't true, but the way you said it to your wife. And if you don't treat your wife right, your prayers will not get answered. <laughs> Forget about that. You know, will you all spare me on that one? I'm afraid I'll rip out my pants. Anyway. Now, this is where the pride, now, how many of you God did with my pride? Uh, uh, Susan, I, I'm sorry you blessed me out. 
Uh, no, I got that backwards, didn't I? <laughs> oh, uh, honey, I didn't mean to say that. Will you forgive me? I forgive you. Now, we were talking about in the uh, Sunday school class, uh, Floyd is bringing, has brought this up to our mind about loaded and, and cock, and cock, cock and loaded. You know, you, how many knows what cock and loaded is? All right, if somebody misses you, you're already loaded, and you're going to fire back real quick. Yeah, let's uh, do that again. That's quick. You dead, boy. <laughs> All right. How many's cocked and loaded? For good. <laughs> for good, right, for good. Now, she's cocked and loaded for good, and she'll say, Honey, I forgive you. She won't bring up my past. You were always doing that. You done that last week. I didn't really need it for the heart. Well, darling. I didn't really need what I bought with the ten dollars. <laughs> Confessions are good for the soul. <laughs> now you see, that's really great. God is working on her hmm. and working on me. Well, why did you do it, darling? Lust. You for, huh? Lust. 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 See, lust is not just the sex. It's lust for this, lust for that. Lust, lust, lust. Everybody understand that? If you don't understand that, yeah, you understand that. All right, so uh, did you square it with God? Oh, yeah. But let me tell you something. See, if I don't love you who I see, I can't love God whom I don't see. Yeah, you, you see, it's tied together. Uh, we understand that, huh? Read First John, you know, uh, 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 chapter four. So, honey, I, I'm sorry. I, I, what I was speaking, there might have been some truth in it, but it's just as much as your money is mine. But we do have to have wisdom, you know, in what we uh, spend. Now, notice I'm talking more kindly, ain't I? You know, and 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 I want you to have things, but but did you really need it? No. All right. So you squared up with God? I did. And you squared up with me? Yes. Well, I forgive you. Thank you. You know, it's not that I we're trying. Huh? I receive your forgiveness. Okay. I thank you, honey. I, 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 I really appreciate it. You got some sugar for me? <laughs> we married 61 years, you know. But see, that's just the way it works. Now, that's not hard. When's the last time you looked your, your mate in the face and just square up? You get, get all that garbage out of you and start reckoning yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus. That's how you walk in the light, by obeying the word of God. Now, let's move on real quick. Like We know that our old, unrenewed self was nailed to the cross with him, with Christ, in order that our body, which is instruments, our bodies are not sinful, but they are instruments that carry out the sin principle. Sin is a principle in working in man might be made ineffective and inactive for evil that we might no longer be slaves of sin. Now, I need some volunteers. Volunteers. Real quick, like one. Any volunteers over here? There's another one. All right, who wants to be sin? You're going to be sin? All right, you're sin. Okay. And you're righteousness. All right, you just get over behave yourself. You stand right there. No. All right, here's sin. Now, when Paul uses the analogy, is that the word I want? Analogy, what is it? Is that right? Am I pronouncing that right? The analogy, which is a parable or a, an example. All right. Paul calls sin a master. Yeah, see, that was their, in their day, they knew what masters were. Say, you were a slave back in those days, and you perhaps had a master. Okay, and that ma you obeyed the master. So sin, uh, thank you. Now here's a young man. He was, he was, th sin was his master. And everywhere his master carried him, he went. But then Paul says, wait a minute, wait a minute now, wait a minute. Sin is not your master anymore. 
So now resist, resist sin. Don't give him a left. All right, you can turn him loose, sin. He goes to the cross. Okay, you got to turn him loose. The blood cleansed him. You, you're, you're no. <coughs> Where are you at? Come over here. He is not your master. Sin is not your master anymore. You have a new master, Jesus. Go with Jesus. You don't have to obey him no more. No more. This is your new master, and he will guide you and direct you and wherever you go. And he will guard you from sin. Yeah, you better see them money, you better hold back. All right, y'all sit down before you get me in trouble. All right, all right. So just remember that. And that's what Paul is saying, using that analogy to say, well, you guys, you know, you're, you, you've been slave to these, this master over there, that he was your boss, but you don't have to obey him no more because Christ, you are now married to Christ. You read uh, chapter 7 in Romans, uh, verse 4, by the way, and then it goes on and says this. We live now for God and not for sin. Now, it takes a little while for that relationship experimentally to be broken uh, in our Christian's life. We don't expect a, a person that just got saved uh, to, to be uh, uh, as disciplined as some of you guys that have been walking with the Lord for a long time. So you have to be, you know, careful you don't bruise them up, okay? But God, let the Spirit of the Lord work in them. It will be the Spirit of the Lord that will change people. Okay? All right, remember that. Now, so we, uh, that we might no longer be the slaves of sin. So you're not the slave of sins no more. Next verse, real quick. Okay, I got it. For when a man dies, he is freed, loosened, delivered from the power of sin among men. All right, when did you die? 2,000 years ago. So you've been loosened, you've been freed, you've been delivered from the master of sin. And now you're married to the master, your new master, Jesus Christ. Righteousness. Okay? Now, that's a learning process that you are in. But don't try to say, God, take this thing out of me. No. Just say, Lord, I thank you. It died, and I reckon, I reckon, I consider it already done, and the Holy Spirit goes into operation. How many of you know that God looks after his word to perform it? So when you say his word, he will perform what you say. Lord, my jealousy died at Calvary. Now, there's many other ways that God does and works in us and, and, and so forth. But this is what Paul is talking about. Go to the next verse now. Uh, and let's move through that. Now, if we have died with Christ, if we have, have, have you died with Christ? See, I died with Christ. Okay. We believe that we shall also live with him. Here and there. Okay? Very simple. Now, the devil's going to come. Now, where's the devil at? Who wants to be the devil? Oh, bless his heart. Here comes the devil. He coming around there. You done? Now you go be the devil. Okay. You think you're really where? Where? What? You, you two. Uh, all right. All right. This guy. You see this guy right here? <laughs> the devil says you think you're righteous. Now he works on your brain. He's work. You might as well be alert on this. Yeah, he, the pointing of the finger. But how do you overcome this dude? By the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. And what is the word of your testimony? We overcome Satan how? By the blood of the lamb and the word of our... And so what is your testimony? My testimony is this. I died with Christ. I'm a new creature in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I have been given authority over you. You're not my master any longer. Neither is sin. Now I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and command you to leave me in the name of Jesus. Get tough. Everybody say, get tough. Ain't none of this hanky-panky. 
Shoo. Man, it, that shooing ain't going to get it done. Man, you stand there like a righteous man of God. You are a righteous woman, and you tell the devil to leave. Let me tell you, you're not fighting with your wife or your husband. You're fighting against principalities and powers in the atmosphere. Remember that. So just shut your mouth. And for those that need help in that area, we have some tape here that's free. It, it's, <laughs> would you put that on for me? Yeah, give us an example. Everybody, they need examples, you know. Uh, well, I just can't shut my mouth. I'm, I'm cocked and loaded. I'm ready to give him a five right there, boy. I know, I'm, I'll tell you, I know where I've been. I've been around a long time. Now, see you do that. Come on. Huh? Oh, I can't wait to see that. Uh, he wants some too? Oh, you want it for your wife? <laughs> you put it on. You, you go to get in it. All right. Here we go. All right. Now turn around and look at everybody. I guarantee you that'll keep her out of trouble. Out of the out of, out of the How's that about the heart now? Out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you are in trouble, I'll guarantee that most of the time it is that little tongue. Everybody stick out their tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You remember, you remember when you were kids, you'd stick out your tongue at somebody? No. Mm no. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now don't do that, son. <laughs> That's. Yeah, put that on. The, don't do that, please. But you get the point. Now, see, that seems extreme to some of you, don't it? But what did Jesus say? That's better than cutting her tongue out. Huh? Huh? If your hand offends you, do what? Yeah, stick it in your wife's face. Yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll get your hand cut off. Are you out there, church? Am I, am I preaching scriptures? Yeah. Now, don't do that, but I tell you what, if my left hand was going to send me to hell, how many would cut their left hand off? I said, if. You better. Some of you haven't read about hell in, in the Bible, have you? I guess I'll have to bring a movie on that one day. It's best to live in this life with just one hand, then the then to go in hell with all, your whole body. That's what Jesus said. Now, that's an extreme. He said that to show us how important it is to cut these things out of our lives. We were talking. Uh, let me bring up something out because that could be a sore to some folk. And it is a sore. I tell people, if you don't use the cross today, let me tell you something. That thing, that jealousy in you, and if you don't apply the cross to it, and sometimes daily, two years from the now, the church wants to grow. God wants to move us into the spiritual arena. And we've got to make some changes. And everybody to sit on these first three rows, and they've been sitting there for 20 years, are required to go back to the back and let the new convert sit up here. I beg your pardon. I've sat in those front chairs all my life. Well, I've, been, I've been a donator to this church. I don't care. I'm, I'm, how many of you understand what I'm talking about? That thing will rise up and quench the Holy Spirit. And there will be no revival. And our sons and daughters and neighbors will go to hell. Because we did not. Obey the word of God and let God do that work in us that he might do something through us. You come into the parking lot. This new convert comes in and he gets in your parking spot. <laughs> and you get out of your car and you come over and says, is that your car? Yes. 
move it. That's my parking place. Uh, 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 okay. So he moves the car and you pull up. But dare that guy get in my parking place. Who does he think he is? I've been going to this church for 180 years. I can't understand it. My grandpappy was went to this church. So the guy comes in and sits down. Would you excuse me? Uh, this is my chair. I've been sitting here for 30 years. And uh, you his wife? Yeah. Would you mind, please? My wife, would you where's my honey? Would you come over and get in our chair, honey? But see, God has worked in them, and they graciously submit. <laughs> I think they got the idea. <laughs> okay. Thank you, son. Thank you. Are you out there? Let's move on before I get into trouble. All right, the next verse. Because we know that Christ, the anointed one, being once raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. Claim it. That's right. Claim it. He that believeth in me shall never die, Jesus said. Oh, there's all kinds of scriptures that he conquered death for us. His death was our death. So you ain't going to never die. Oh, your body will quit breathing. You don't want to go to heaven with these bodies. I mean, they're hardly breathing now. See, there'll be a one day you'll say, boy, I can't wait for the transition. Absent from this body, present with the Lord. Get excited about it. Our funerals should be, when they're Christians, should be hallelujah time. Now, I know we miss people when they go. I'm sure Susan will miss me when I go. I miss her. I mean, I'll miss that coffee every morning she brings me. It's natural. <sighs> wow. Because we know, notice this, everybody say no. no. See, there's things in the Bible you can know that Christ the anointed one being once raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. Remember, he's our substitute. He's been judged for us and, and found guilty for us. And you can't, you can't, judge, you can't judge us now because it's already been judged through Christ. All right, next verse, and we've got to quit. Got to get that water. For by the death he died, he died to sin, ending, ending his relationship to it. Once for all, and the life that he lives, he is living to God in unbroken fellowship with him. Next verse. Even so, consider yourselves, consider yourselves also dead to what? Sin, and your relationship to it, what? Broken, but you are alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with him. Around this way, just like this, okay? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I do. Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? I have. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? I do. The Bible says then you're saved. My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hold your breath. You, you want to hold your breath? Are you okay? Uh -huh. All right, go put your hands right there. Buried with Christ. Risen to walk in the newness of life. Father, I break every curse of the past off of her. All oppression, depression, everything of the past goes, gone, buried with Christ, risen to walk in the newness of life. Now, Lord, just fill her with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Shout out. Halalari Asoto Korababi Kiki Ladababa. Be filled, my daughter. Be filled. Right now, yes, just speak it out in Jesus' name. God's giving you those gifts. You must speak it out. Just do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you're with her. You will never leave her nor forsake her. You are her heavenly Father. 
Oh, even though others have been unfaithful, your Heavenly Father will never be unfaithful to you, for you are His daughter, saith the Lord. When I found out what water baptism really meant and the picture that it showed, that might have been 20 years after I had been baptized the first time. I submitted we, uh, to baptism again. And uh, it was in our pool on Meadowcliff Avenue. Water baptism doesn't save you. We're saved by the grace of God through faith. And what Christ did at that cross, minus nothing. But God has given us commands. And one of the commands is that those that are disciples are to baptize. And those that have been saved are to submit to being baptized, and this is what our sister has done. So she has showed this congregation that her past is gone. God don't remember anything of her, the past, no sense, no nothing, no need to bring them up. The Satan will try to bring them up, but she's got to learn, like I said. Cast them down and give God the glory. She's a brand new creation in Christ. That's something God did for her and did for us. So think back on your water baptism and remember you have no obligation whatsoever to serve the flesh but to serve the Spirit of God and He'll give you the power to do it and that's where the joy of the Lord is. Amen? God bless everybody. Have a good afternoon. God bless you now. <laughs>